what's going on everybody this is john chick gaming on the mic here coming at you with a brand new episode of the gore pirates dynasty here on ncaa 14 and featuring that oklahoma high school football mod as well we come here and the closing stages of year number two already we have a decent record not a great one but a solid one nonetheless we're four and three well we are hosting a millwood team that's not the same millwood team as last year millwood comes in two and five they have not won a single conference game yet this year but that being said we do have uh we do have to take them seriously though millwood is a b overall squad they have a pretty good offense at least on paper whereas we're a c minus overall team ourselves so we definitely do not have um the luxury of just rolling our helmets out there and assuming that we're just gonna come out and do what we want to do even though millwood is currently running an incredible four game losing streak as of right now so that being said we're gonna get ready to jog out here hoping for a big time matchup hoping for a big time win and we're gonna have fun in this episode man hoping you guys can come out and enjoy this one if you guys are excited for this episode make sure you go ahead smack that like button for me then also hit that subscribe button as well if you have to be brand new to the channel let's see if we can handle our business against this millwood falcons football squad let's get it so let's go ahead and get our game underway against the Millwood Falcons. And the Falcons did end up deferring to the second half. So we're going to start with ourselves with the ball in our hands as Vita St. Louis will go ahead and get the game started with. Nice little six yard run. And it's just important that we keep ourselves ahead of the chains. We know this Millwood offense can be explosive. They dropped 40 on us last year in the season finale ultimately ended our season last year so we're going to get a little bit of revenge for what happened you know late in year number one as now Matt Chimantar has his boys across the 50 yard late ready but we can move down the field a little bit further as Jody Gentry is going to pick up some yards on the slant he'll pick up a gain of six and that will set us up with another third and short just keeping us ahead of the chains leaving for easy first downs and this one was not going to be an easy first down as Vita St. Louis gets dropped in the backfield a big early decision for coach McCown early and one where he says we're going to risk it for the biscuit and go for it fourth and two coming up Matt Gimitar with the option and no one goes with the quarterback so Matt Gimitar is going to pick up the first down and the Gore Pirates will still hang on to the ball for now. Right after that first down conversion, Matt Gimitar will again drop back the pass and we will find Casey Shiverly in the nick of time. Casey Shiverly will set us up with a first and goal. And on that first and goal, Vaden St. Louis, is he going to take us into the end zone? Yes, he is. Touchdown, Pirates! And not only do we knock out nearly half of a quarter on our drive, but we also ended on the highest note, a touchdown on the board. But we do get a studio update after we get the extra point. Muskogee takes down Class in SES, 35-28 in an absolute shootout. Bixby and others also go down as well, so we might see a little bit of a shakeup in the top 25. But now we can take back over as Millwood actually goes free and out on its next possession. So a real chance to make this 14 to nothing here real early and real quick as well. Let's see how we handle this next drive because of that as we'll hand the ball off to Vita St. Louis who follows the blocks up field and he'll pick up a first down for the Gore Pirates. However, we do have a third and long on our hands. So trying to get this third and 14 converted as Gimantar rolls to the right. He might have a man open. And sure enough, he finds Beef Wellington in the end zone. Touchdown, Pirates. And Gore is going to quickly jump out to a 14 to nothing lead. 
giving Millwood a taste of their own medicine. So we will get another studio update, and there's more upsets around the state. Jenks, the number four team in the state of Oklahoma, loses to an unranked Hennessy, and then Edmund Memorial nearly falls to same fate as well. So maybe it's that time of upsets here as we're looking to also pull a minor upset of our own off against Millwood. We're up 14 to nothing. So here we are jumping to the second quarter of action. Millwood still not able to get a first down because they had to go free and out yet again. So here we are starting the second quarter looking to dominate the second quarter as well. How about that nice little shimmy by Carl Durant to get an extra yard or two. Nice run there by the backup tailback. As now, second and nine coming up as Matt Chimitar rolls out to the right, looks over and finds Casey Shiverly for yet another first down. Matt Chimitar doing a fantastic job of commanding the offense. He's really showing some poise, even with people in his face as well. They're able to calmly find Jody Gentry for the first down. Very next play, Matt Chimitar lines up in the shotgun. Is going to hand it off to Vita St. Louis. And the halfback counter ends up being a very effective play. We pick up a gain of seven. We will get set up with a third and short. We're going to pick it up on the ground. Chimitar, he's looking to take it out on the option. And Matt Chimitar gets loose. And he is going to be gone like a girl in a country song. Touchdown, Pirates. And Gore will take a 21 to nothing lead. So how about this for the Gore Pirates with a commanding lead right now. Gore up 21 to nothing. And Millwood, they haven't done a thing. At least in this whole game so far. But they're looking to change that here midway through this second quarter. They're looking to finally get a first down as we were bamboozled. We were flabbergasted on the halfback screen just in time. Able to finally bring them down, but man, we got flabbergasted on that particular screen. We got to prepare for that a little bit better. And now Millwood suddenly finds themselves across midfield as they look for the first points of the game. First and 10 as he'll hand it off to Holani, and Holani is still on his feet. He'll actually pick up the first down as well as George Holani with his biggest run of the day. They're trying to get the tailback involved, one of the stars of this Millwood offense, looking to let him cook. We'll see if they let him cook a little bit more here on this third and short. Looks like they seem like they're destined to give Holani the ball here again. They do, but Holani is met by the senior Easton Lynn, and Easton Lynn absolutely lights him up like a Christmas tree. So Millwood will trot out their field goal unit to finally go ahead and get themselves up on the scoreboard, but the field goal attempt is going to be no good. It's going to be wide to the left, and Millwood is still scoreless. So 231 left to play here in this first half as Gore will take over once again. As we'll set up a play action here early. Millwood sends the blitz. We had someone open late, but Matt Chimitar cannot see him in time. So Cobb was a little bit of a throwaway. So now third and long coming up as Chimitar trying to pick up the first down. However, the wide receiver screen was originally covered. Nice improvisation by Matt Chimitar to be able to go ahead and work the first down. You love to see it. Really doing a good job using the legs. And I would love to see Jody Gentry there use his hands a little bit better. That should have been caught. Instead, we're staring down a third and 11. Could have Beef Wellington open over the middle of the field. We do, but we miss him. Matt Gimentor misses him. And we had to punt the football away. So now, 133 left to play here in this first half. As Turnbull set the drop back, the pass looks over the middle and finds M Macho Levine for a gain of 10. So now, second and inches coming up here as Turnbull set the drop back, looks over to the left hand side and finds Eric McAllister for the first down. 
Millwood will use one of their timeouts. They still have two timeouts to work through as Turnbull will drop back the pass yet again. Have a little pressure up the middle, but will not be affected ultimately as Eric McAllister makes yet another catch and gets out of bounds too. It stops the clock at 110. Doing a good job running this two-minute drill so far. Finding the open receivers, finding the matchups. As Tynale Hopper, he gets his first catch of the day. It sets Millwhoop up inside the 35-yard line. Looking to continue to pass the ball. It's been a passing clinic for the Millwood Falcons. As the Millwood Falcons still trying to get on the scoreboard with less than a minute left. Turnbull drops back, looks towards the end zone, nearly intercepted by Easton Lynn. Wilkins Cobb, one of the back of corners, is also in there on the coverage. I just burped that sexy. We'll see if we can get a sexy third down stop to go with it. Turnbull facing pressure, brought down. Xavier Thompson is short, but they're going to go for it here on fourth down. 37 seconds left. Everyone expecting a run. Turnbull going to run it up for Halani and nowhere to go. George Halani is stopped cold in his tracks. And that will mean Gore will have one more chance at the end zone. 35 seconds left. Two timeouts to work. Gimitar draws back, looks over the middle, and finds Jake Durant for the first down. Able to pick up a gain of 16 quickly. We're going to go into our no huddle. Gimitar gets the troops to the line quickly and sets up a screen for Vita St. Louis. But the timing is off. Oh, we had it set up perfectly. Just could not execute. And now it's second and 10 now for Matt Gimitar, who looks to the left hand side. Finds Beef Wellington across midfield. First down for the Gore Pirates. And Beef Wellington has them just a first down away from Jake Hill's field goal range. The freshman kicker, he's not afraid of the big moments, but we are afraid of taking a loss there. That is a huge loss for us. 18 seconds on the clock. Gimitar looks over the middle, looks for Beef Wellington, and it's dropped. Kanjo is going to intercept the pass, and Millwood is able to make a stand with 10 seconds left on the clock. Oh, that is a brutal one to watch. As now Millwood has a chance to score with 10 seconds left in the first half. Turnbull is going to drop back the pass. He's going to look over to the left-hand side, off to McAllister, and he'll use one of his timeouts to set up a Hail Mary opportunity. Turnbull lined up in the shotgun. Free wide to the right. Turnbull drops back. He has time. Throws it up in the air and it's caught. But it's caught by one of your Gore Pirates. Intercepted. Here comes Porter Winstrid trying to bounce it back to the crib. He'll be brought down at about the 40 yard line. But what a play by the sophomore sensation to high point this football. What an absolute play, man, by Porter Lindstrid. And that will take us into halftime. It's been a convincing first half for your Gore Pirates, who take a 21-0 lead into the locker room. You love to see it. So here we go, jumping into the second half. We've been giving them a taste of their own medicine. Let's see if they can handle business here in the second half, though, as Gimitar looks for a big play. He's got Jake Durant down the sideline, and he's going to bust the middle of coverage. Wide but naked open. First down for the Pirates, and we're looking for a dagger, trying to find the end zone here. Vita St. Louis, man, he could have had a touchdown. He had to drop it, though. So instead, it's going to be third and goal. But we're going with five wide, trying to spread the field out. Millwood looks over the middle, trying to get it out to an open receiver. But it's offline. And the big play kind of goes to lace, to be honest with you. As Jake Hills has to settle for the field goal attempt instead. We still add on to the lead, but not as much as what we wanted. 
So now it's going to be 24 to nothing in favor of the Pirates. Millwood, on the other hand, has hardly gotten across midfield, it seems like. Let alone put any points on the scoreboard. Looking for that same kind of dominance here in that second half. We'll see if Turnbull has any of that dog in him, though. Second and three coming up. Turnbull drops back, looks over the middle, and finds Capels over the middle for a first down. Easton Lynn had a busted coverage there. And now the Millwood Falcons are putting together a drive themselves. Turnbull looking over to the right-hand side. And Skyward Turnbull is sacked by, looks like, one of the defensive linemen opposite of Savian Simmons. The man whose name is unknown is able to get a sack on this quarterback. We'll see if he can get another one so that even us in the booth can't, can't forget about his name does at least lead to a third and long third and nine coming up to be exact as now Turnbull trying to pick up the first down through the air Turnbull looks over to the right inside and drops it right in between Cobb and the sophomore sensation Porter Lindstrid and the drive will continue after all Turnbull again looking to throw drops it off to Halani and George Holani will pick up the sticks yet again, setting up a red zone opportunity. So first and 10 for the Millwood Falcons as they hand it off to George Holani. This time on the ground though, and that is nearly another first down. Biggest run of the day for George Holani, who's finally starting to find a little bit of running room though. As we lead to a third and short, Turnbull looks over to the left hand side. It's incomplete though. He throws it away on a third and short. And Millwood was actually considering going for this. But unfortunately, in a false start is going to put those plans completely on the back burner. So now, Millwood is going to get the field goal team out instead. And the field goal attempt is good. But miss opportunities on both sides here in this third quarter. So let's see if we can have better results on our next drive got a field goal but we don't come out here for field goals we want touchdowns we'll see if we can get another one of those touchdowns here on this drive as Vita St. Louis it's off to a solid start here not a liquid or a gas to nearly pick up the first down as it sets up a second and short where Gimitar looks over the middle has enough time to get it out to Beef Wellington and Beef Wellington turns a two-yard catch into 22 yards you'll love to see it and I would love to see another completion here for Matt Gimitar, who finds Jody Gentry for another 22-yard gain. Say it with me, guys. First down, Pirates. Let's go, baby. So here we go. Red zone opportunity. Gimitar looking to punch it into the end zone. Drops it off to Jody Gentry, who pulls us in a little bit closer a seven yard reception. Second and three coming up though as Matt Gimentar is set to hand it off as Vita St. Louis is able to slice and dice through the defense. Touchdown Pirates! And it's a big day for the Gore offense who puts up a 30 piece before we even get into this final quarter of action here. Really doing a good job of giving Millwood a taste of their own medicine. You love it, you love it, you love it. So let's see if our defense can get another stop. Second and five coming up. They're gonna throw over to the right-hand side to Eric McAllister, who does get out of bounds. Even though he had a bunch of space to work through, but that will take us to the end of the third quarter. It's been a dominating affair for your Gore Pirates. We have a 31-3 lead going to this fourth quarter of action. So that being said, we now jump into the fourth quarter where we try to finish strong as Turnbull is going to throw over the middle to Xavier Thompson, who's able to stay on his feet and pick up a few yards, a few more yards than expected there. That'll bring the Falcons into our side of the field. Let's see if we can shut that sh down, though, as Xavier Thompson continues to make plays throughout the field. Having a good start to the fourth quarter. Already has doubled his production for the first three quarters of the game. Could be considered a little bit too little too late because we are up by 28. But hey, you know, it happens to the best of us sometimes. 
as Millwood sits uh, on the verge of a red zone opportunity, but Savian Simmons is going to say return to sender as Savian Simmons had the one-on-one -on -one big mistake the sophomore makes a play. So third and long coming up now, and we're going to send the blitz here. Make sure Turnbull comes out and feels this pressure. Turnbull drops back, faces a ton of pressure, and he's brought down. This time, it's the sophomore sensation, Porter Lindstrid, who works through a running back. Actually, the running back did a terrible job of chipping there. So, 4th and 19, and Millwood doesn't have a choice. They got to go for this. 4th and 19 coming up. Turnbull draws back, looks over to the left-hand side, and it's the perfect call. A wide receiver lined up on a linebacker. That's not how you want to do it. 4th and 19, they pick up the first down. Absolutely unbelievable. Bailing these boys out right now. I swear to God. So here we go again. Another third down coming up. Can we get another third down stop? Third and three coming up as Turnbull lines up under center. He's going to go with the play action. Has some time in the pocket. A ton of time, actually. So much so, he's actually going to scramble. And Skyward Turnbull finds the end zone. Touchdown, Falcons. No one open on the play action, so decide to keep it himself. And there was a parting of the Red Sea there. So now the Falcons are going to go for the onside kicks at this point. Because there's only four minutes left in the game. But, oh, wow, that could have been a disaster. Thankfully, Casey Shiverly was there. But that could have been a complete disaster. So now that we have the ball in our hands with four minutes left to play in this game, see if we can take some time off the clock here. We're going to start this drive off, running the ball up to Vita St. Louis. Vita St. Louis will pick up a few yards on the ground. So now, third and short. This is a critical third down that Millwood desperately needs. Gimitar looks over to the right and finds Jody Gentry, who keeps himself in bounds, and that's important. Because at this point, Millwood is going to be forced to use some of their timeouts. They only have one timeout left to work through at this point. So we can now play keep away as much as we want to, to be honest with you. Unfortunately, we do have a first and goal, so we'll likely have to punch it in, which, you know, of course we got to do with just a couple of seconds left or a couple of uh, yards away from the end zone. You already know we were going to handle our business. And yeah, man, that is going to wrap things up here. Gore is going to win convincingly 38 to 10. We didn't like it when Millwood did us dirty at the end of year number one. So to be able to come out and give them a taste of their own medicine. Hey, this is great validation for a program, man. So first of all, how about a complete effort for your Gore Pirates? But we don't have the complete blowout. We do end up winning very convincingly. Guys, we might also have a star on our hands. Matt Gimitar, he has gotten very comfortable in his offense. 14 for 21, 251 touchdown and did have an interception that wasn't necessarily his fault either. Uh, but he did a lot on the ground as well. Uh, Vita St. Louis, man, had a big day as well. 86 carries for uh, for free touchdowns. Uh, Matt Gimitar also had 53 yards and a rushing touchdown on the day too. Uh, dude just made a lot of big time plays. Uh, just trying to be that complete player. Now, for the receivers, we didn't do as good of a job as what we typically do in terms of spreading the ball out. Jody Gentry, man, he had his arguably his best game in the season. Six catches, 72 yards. He really stood out in this game, but not as much as Beef Wellington. Beef Wellington really used his speed to his advantage. He ends up with three catches for 78 yards, and he has the only touchdown pass for Matt Jimitar uh, here in this one. But it was the defense that made a lot of big-time plays today. Porter Lindstrid quickly becoming someone that should be a prospect for college football. That'll be a big-time accomplishment for our program. Porter Winstrid did just about everything today. Led the team in tackles, most solo tackles for sure. He had nine solo tackles in this one. Three TFLs, 
he got to the quarterback he intercepted the pass towards the end of the first half as well dude just ju did just about everything and then easton win is just like a diet version of him easton win had the second most tackles on the team a couple of tfls as well just doing a great job harassing the opposing quarterback as you will know jamie fletcher and samian simmons uh were both able to get to him would have loved to get a little bit more production from our defensive ends today but i really like what i saw from this game like i said a complete performance let's bottle this up for the rest of the season shall we but I'm sure you guys are wondering what happened to Jackson Durant. Uh, Jackson Durant being a no-show in really the last game and a half. And a big reason for that is that in that Olasso game, he actually did tore his pectoral. So he did miss the, the Millwood game, obviously. And then he's going to miss the next couple of games as well, which is unfortunate. He's having a really solid year for us. Uh, so we're hoping for a quick recovery because he is a pretty important part of our offense in the long term but even without some of our key guys we are still going to march on and we're still capable of really having those explosive performances offensively we're going to look to continue that offensive momentum and then some in the very next episode where we will go on the road and take on the wildcats of piedmont high in what could be another critical battle in the 4a sectional so, that being said, I hope you guys did enjoy this episode because I certainly did. And if you enjoyed the content, I would truly appreciate it. From the bottom of my heart, if you smack that like button for me, and then also hit that subscribe button as well if you happen to be brand new to the channel. With that being said, this is John Jake Gaming on the mic signing off, but hope you guys are all out there having a good one. Take care, everybody.